Hello, Clayton Stuffelbeam here, Central Illinois PFR location lead. Today we are at our El Paso, Illinois organic field show. With me today is Ben Kruger. Um, you're from Missouri with yes, Weed Zapper. Um, let's go ahead and give me some of your history. Uh, well, the Weed Zapper is a family owned business. Um, actually, old school manufacturing is the name of the business. My family and I own and operate that business. Um, We've been doing this for, we've been doing electrical for about 20 years. This particular project we've been involved with now going on three years. Um, last year we sold 15 prototype models and those models got across over 15,000 acres of testing. And this year we have somewhere in the neighborhood of about 90 units in the field this year. So wh how come you started this business? What was the process? Well, my brother and I are, um, organic hobby farmers. We hobby farm about 200 organic acres and um, I guess we're not very good organic farmers because we had a lot of weed trouble and uh, the second part of that story is we have been electricians for 20 years or thereabout um, and it's hard to keep those two occupations separated and that's where the weed zapper comes in. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and let's uh, talk about the weed zapper. Development, how it works, um, basically, we're sending a positive charge of electricity down the stem of that plant. So I like to use an ink pen kind of for an example. You have the center point of your ink pen, and that would represent the moisture inside the stem of that plant. So basically, we're going to come across here with that electrode, and we're going to touch the stem. That energy is going to transfer down through the inside of the stem of that plant all the way into the root system, travel across the earth, and back to the grounding cultures themselves. That completes the circuit all the way back to the generator. Whenever we have that connection between positive and negative electricity within the moisture of that stem, it causes rapid or even instantaneous heating. When that happens, it actually causes cell damage or cell explosion, and when that happens, the plant is obviously dead. It will go typically depending on ground moisture, about four to five inches deep into the root system. Um, this system proves to be very, very effective on anything that conducts electricity well. Um, typically more woody type plants, such as um, small trees and saplings are not affected as well. And even late stages of velvet leaf late in the season or late stages of uh, like foxtail when that stem has started drying down, it's typically a more tough system for us to use our machine on. You give a, a really good explanation on grass control earlier for our demonstration here. How, how well are we controlling grasses? I, I like what you said there in, in control. You know, we'll show you some pictures of velvet leaf and, and some other stuff where you can see instantaneous death and that's the entire death of the plant. But in a grass setting, we're typically dealing with more of a control type um, where it's gonna take typically at least three passes through the field to do that. And that, the reason is, is you have, um, you have a grass that has 80% of its mass below the canopy and below the surface of that crop. So I guess I would compare this to if you lose an arm and that's only 20% of your, bo mo your body's mass, you would not die from it. And that's what happens with that grass too. We can totally kill what we get a hold of, but because that's only 20% of the mass of the plant, it's a very hard kill to totally eliminate that plant. Therefore, that plant has the ability to send numerous shoots back up above the canopy requiring multiple applications. So that's where I like to say it's more of a control than a total elimination. Now, one of the things that I noticed, um, we have to do this a little bit later in the season to get the weeds above the canopy. And the, the weed zapper was making contact with the very, very top portion of that soybean plant. Do you think we're going to have any damage there? Damage, yes. Death, no. I don't see anything out here. And you'll look at some of the pictures and you'll question me maybe. But um, you'll also have the opportunity with Beck Seeds. They'll also show you those later on and they'll know exactly what's going on. This is a totally independent test that they're running for us, and we're very appreciative of it. But typically, a, uh, a soybean is kind of made like a, like a man with a hat on his head. Clayton, I'll use you as an example here. 
we have the hat on that soybean's head that's typically about four to inches above Clayton's head, yep. which is right below the hat. <laughs> so if we take the hat off, Clayton still lives. But basically, that's what happens with those soybeans. If we take that four to six inch cap off of his head, we're okay. But if we get his main growing stem, which is typically about four inches below that, you will see plant death. So in answering to your question, do I think you have damage? Yeah, there's a little bit of minimal damage, but I'm sure most of us are familiar with the idea that a soybean likes to be stressed a little bit. Typically, it makes them set more pods, and you can argue with me one way or argue with me the other way, but typically stress does not hurt the yield of a soybean as long as it's done during the right time. Exactly. You said the right word there, the right time. Um, how are we powering the weed zapper? Uh, this is an industrial generator. It's not a PTO driven generator. It does use the PTO of the tractor, however. We have a belt drive system. That's one of our four layers of protection for the generator itself. So we have a belt drive system that actually drives it off the tractor's PTO. Uh, that's why the cart is carried on the rear of the unit. That is the power production portion of the unit. Of course, we like to use our applicator bar up on the front of it because we want the first thing that that weed sees to be the last thing that he sees. What about safety? So I had to set on a special pad in the seat. Let's yes, talk sir. about safety. Okay. Um, there are numerous different safeties employed, but the ones that the operator is most familiar with is number one, um, you have to be seated in the seat. And when you sit down in that seat, Clayton, you can attest to this, we send up some basic operating instructions that you need to read through and become familiar with the machine. Every time you get out of that seat, we're going to send you those instructions again. That way, if Clayton knows what he's doing and I don't, and he gets out of the seat and I get in, I have the opportunity to see exactly what I need to do to stay safe in this operating environment. So that seat sensor is a very, very big one. The second system would be motion sensors. Those are located on the coulters. Basically, as long as that coulter is moving, we're going to go ahead and let you make power. If that coulter stops, we're going to shut it down. Um, on a larger model that would have wings, it would have wing sensors that would alert the operator if the wing came out of contact with the ground to the best of our ability so that you would know that your grounding circuit is incomplete at that point and you would need to stop zapping. Very cool. What about, this is a six row machine here. Yes, sir. How much horsepower and what's this, what's this machine going to cost? Um, this particular machine, I would like to see a minimum of about 150 PTO horsepower on it. You can get by with less than that. I have guys that are running them on 120. It all depends on the weed pressure. I turn the same generator with a 10 horsepower electric motor. So it takes no power to turn that. But as Clayton can attest to, if you come into contact with a lot of plants, it takes a lot of power. Um, so I would like to see this particular model run on 150, even up to 200, 225 PTO horsepower tractor for the best operating conditions. You will typically have more generator heating that takes place with too small a tractor and the generator dropping to too low of RPM than too large of a tractor. So size it accordingly. This particular model would be about $42,000. Um, that comes with everything you need to get it hooked up to your tractor. Your tractor would need to have a front three point in order to use this model on the front. We also offer that. That's a $3,500 option offered through old school manufacturing. Now we're in the field. We weed zapped this, these couple of strips here about an hour ago. And it's very amazing how fast this works. Water hemp plant right in front of Ben here. The top of the stem is completely blown out. We have a water hemp plant back here that has not been hit yet. It's full, well and healthy, just like most water hemp plants are. Um, let's take a look right there. We've got quite a bit of weed pressure here too. Um, plenty of velvet leaf and some lambs quarters as well. I'd like to point out just something here. This is an opportunity we don't see very often to point out in a video. And there are three different settings available on the weed zapper itself. We have a low weed setting. We have a uh, broadleaf setting and we have a grass setting. And in this particular instance, I told Clayton because as we can see over the rest of the field, there was a lot of velvet leaf, which typically takes a higher voltage setting. So because of that, I told Clayton, 
um, to run it on the grass setting. But because of that, we have a blowout in the stem of the plant. This looks awesome, but it's not good. What we're typically going for is we want that, that stem to stay in place and that energy to travel all the way into the root system. So this is a particular instance where we have multiple different um, plant species right. like most fields do. So of course, we look at the most of the field and we see what we need to set it on. We set up accordingly, but we'll have to pay attention to this. I'm sure that you guys will be watching this yep. throughout the study. But if you see a lot of these type of damages in the plant, go to a different setting. I really like that broadleaf setting, a little bit lower voltage. It still has the same amount of current, which is what causes the damage. But let's get that forced into that stem better. So this is a cool opportunity because we'll see exactly what happens yep. here. Yep, exactly. Um, another thing that uh, I forgot to ask earlier is what are your options? How big, can, how big of a machine do you sell? How big do you want? <laughs> Um, we have right now our largest option is a 40-foot option. Um, this year we are developing a couple different things. One of those things being an automated height control, which will allow us to go out to a wider boom setting. As Clayton can attest to, he was running a 15-foot model, but you still you have to focus pretty hard to keep that 15-foot exactly where you want yep. it going across the field. On a 40-foot model, that becomes even more of a challenge. So basically right now we're limited to the operator's ability to control the boom itself and the height application of it. So because we're messing with a plus or minus two right. inch tolerance, it's a pretty tight tolerance, a sorry. 40 foot unit, you're probably running all three sections independently height wise, it's like a spare boom? The, on the 40 foot unit, there's actually five sections on a 40 okay. foot unit. And basically, it has the contouring ability on all five sections to contour independently as you're going across a contouring field or ditches. However, the height control is still the same as what you have it here. You have one height control, so that's where it gets to be a challenge to go farther out. In order to have multiple height controls using hydraulics only, then we have to... Um, we would have to depend on the operator to look at this section and this section and this section, and eventually we're going to end up with a lot of damaged soybeans yep. because of that. Or missed weeds. So that's why the next step for us that we're focusing a lot of our development on is an automated height control to give that operator the ability to keep control of more boom at one time. What about other developments? You're working on anything in canopy? We are working, at something, working on a, a system that goes in canopy. We're not talking just too much about it just yet because, um, number one, um, we don't like competition. <laughs> and number two, um, the, you know, it's a concept, and I don't like to talk about dreams. I like to talk about reality. Exactly. I've tested a lot of neat pieces of equipment. i got to say there is nothing I've ever tested that gives you instant gratification of watching a weed blow up in the seat of a tractor. It was quite amazing and quite a good opportunity. So I thank you guys for coming. Check out WeedZapper.com and uh, look, at, look what they have to offer. Thank you for joining us. Have a good day.